This is episode 94 of the Gold Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Dion Morales, and today I'm joined by William Hagwood. I'm the Spencer Crittenden of Gold Squadron Podcast. And Marcel, our Junk Master's good now, Monzano. Heck no. <laughs> I want so to redo. If, you want to, <laughs> so if you're not aware, currently Chicago's in a polar vortex. Um... It's Hoth up in here, as uh, one some would say. Um, so the first thing I want to announce is tomorrow's usual League Night stream isn't happening uh, because it's going to be, like, deathly cold outside. So we completely canceled our, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, our League Night. So anybody who is from Gold Squadron or Chicagoland area, don't come. Store is closed, completely closed. And then on top of that, of course, that means that we can't do our League Night stream. But never fear. Uh, instead, I'm going to be streaming a couple of Vassal games uh, versus some patrons and some patrons versus each other. Should be a good time. And we're going to be running from the same time, 5 p.m. Central to about 11.30 Central. It'll be happening. Again, Polar Vortex, it's happening. Uh, stay warm, anybody out there. And now... I'll take this ridiculous costume off. Uh, so today, we're talking about points. It's all about points. Points going up. Points going down. Percentages. By how much? How By how little? Comparison across factions. All the things in depth. We've taken... There's a, a lot of different spreadsheets out there. And we've taken the parts. A few of the best ones that we've seen. Combined them together. Along with some information that some of our uh, friends and patrons have given. Uh, Given us some some fun statistics that we're going to look at uh, as well. But before we go too far, I do want to give a shout out to our patrons, uh, new patrons that we've had since last week, including people who became patrons during our Phoenix System Open stream. Thank you very much. So I'd like to give a big shout out to Jason McClary, Andrew Campbell, Thomas Rockwell, Colton Ray, Doug Howe, Kimberly Foster, Brian Pasur, Michael Winnick. Ryan Donnelly, Danny Payne, Thomas Leviers, Steve Salemberg, Mark Drake, Magnus Wendell, Jefferson Hansen, Jacob Correll, Gray Hood, Brian Linwood, Tyler Boglet, no, Blod, Blod Get, Dave Pekka, Benol Dion, hey, that's a good last name. That's a good last name. Uh, Dan Byrne, Jade Degan, and Wade Crossman. By the way, I had to end with Wade Crossman because Wade also let me sleep in his house in Arizona. And I need to give him a huge shout out. Thank you so much, Wade. Thank you to you and your wife, Rachel. Uh, it was great meeting you and hanging out with your, uh, your brother and cousins. It was great meeting you guys. All right. So, um... We already talked about the live stream. I do want to give a shout out to Luke Carrington, who put on the first ever Gold Squadron paint cast this last Monday. Extremely successful. They're working on a Gold Squadron themed YV666 that includes our boy Skippy the Force Ghost. All right. I'm, I'm excited for when you get to that, that step, Luke. That's going to be super awesome. So tune in Mondays and Thursdays. Um, super excited. As for Gold Squadron um, major event streaming, uh, February is kind of sparse. We may have uh, a Wave Championship that we're streaming, but that's still uh, to be determined right now. But once we hit March, oh, man. Things are going to be Ronin. Like, my schedule looks ridiculous from March till June. It's kind of crazy. So, this is the calm before the storm, some would say. All right. <clears throat> it's time. Points on points on points. So, for today's cast, most of it, uh, you're not going to be, be even seeing our faces. Uh, we're going to be looking at a document that we put together. And um, so, be before maybe we uh, we jump right into it. What is something, Marcel or, or Will, you guys can, can jump in here, like the number one thing that maybe popped out to you? You've gone through this. You go, huh, before we break it down together, what is the first thing on your mind? I, I like the changes. I like the 
I think the first thing on my mind is just it, it feels fresh. It feels like a like a whole new game. It feels like a, like if you're playing a video game and um, and, and they do a, like a patch. It feels it feels fresh. It feels like once again everything is viable. I, and um, wait, am I going into ants? I'm starting to count. You said the one thing. I'm at like number five. The one. All right. Uh, one e wings. Love e wings. Corn horn on the table. All right. What about you, Will? Um, I really like the the scaling uh, point cost on a lot of the upgrades now, and uh, I'm really am looking at the generic BB Astromech and BB Eight because uh, they are super affordable when you have really low pilot skill. All right. Uh, as for me, I'm gonna echo what Marcel started with, and that is that. Um, new points equal a refresh of the game that we love. Uh, it's going to prevent things from getting uh, stale. And I think we are going to see some new um, lists rise and some lists that were popular or good uh, either disappear completely because they're not legal anymore or, um, you know, at least dissipate in how good they were. Um, I think one thing that these point changes do is it's not about – like, oh, I'm a this list player. Okay? That's not what this, this game is about anymore. Is you need to be an X-Wing player. Maybe you go by faction. Sure, I'm an Imperial player. But you need to... It, it's about having well-rounded skills if you're playing on the competitive level. And if you're playing casual, I mean, you could technically do whatever you want. But if you're using points, you know, it's an opportunity to play with more of your collection. Uh, so that we have fun. And yeah, Marcel, you said like a patch, you know, things, things changed up. You got an update and, uh, yeah, here we go. Let's start looking into this. Now <clears throat> we're going to go faction by faction. And let me make sure I get my dock all set up before I do that. And, uh, we're going to go, we're going to start with the rebel scum. All right, let me go ahead. Wait, was Rebel or Scum? The Rebel Scum. The Rebels. <laughs> Here we go. So uh, we did link it in the chat. And those of you who are listening or watching in the future, it will be in the description down below. All right. So if you're looking at our document, one thing that you'll see right away is um, it's color-coded. Things that are have been reduced in points are blue things that have been increased in points are going to be red uh slots that are added are in blue slots that have been taken away are in red we have them currently sorted by highest percentage of change in the single faction we can sort by ship and things like that here in a minute but i wanted to start by just looking at each faction what is the number one thing percentage wise that got the biggest bump so um will what pilot for Rebels got the biggest bump here? Or what pilots? Uh, it was the the YT-1300. Uh, saw Lando Calrissian, Chewbacca, and Han Solo. I'll get a, a massive deduction in point cost. Uh, over 10 points each. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so yeah, Lando, a change of 13.04 percent nothing's changed no, no slots have been taken away nothing like that um lando getting the biggest uh excuse me uh chewbacca getting the biggest bump with 13.1 11 points but 13.1 percent all right and we'll go ahead flip to empire real quick and oh, i have to sort this one my bad the magic of computers oh, data we need data we're gonna sort we're gonna go lowest highest and we're gonna sort by column f there's that percentage all right so crew wise this this crew got a huge break take a look at that grand moff tarkin okay grand moff tarkin minus four points that's a 40 percent reduction absolutely huge and when we get to ships the biggest reduction is a 10 percent reduction here 
by the uh, VT49 decimator, the patrol leader, and close behind, we have the uh, Rear Admiral Sherinu, and then some gunboats coming after that. All right, Marcel, I want you to take a look at Scum. I'll go ahead and sort that for you now. Um, I think we can skip those first ones. Fifty percent is misleading. Um, with the so from two just, to one. Then just go. But, did go with the ship then? Yeah, with the ships. I, you're hiding it. Whoops. <laughs> So the um, yeah the jump master uh, all three of them you got Teltrua uh, Manaru and contracted scout all of them in the sixteen to fifteen percent uh, drop in points they're dropping by by ten points uh, I don't think there's any surprise here they they were um, they were terrible at sixty fifty points and they're terrible at forty points so um, yeah you're basically still flying Dengar and where's Dengar Dengar went down. <laughs> To 58, and the title stayed the same, so it's a 10% cost decrease. So Den Dengar should be pretty good. Yeah, if you look at Tel, Tel Travera, you get a free punishing one plus two points to play with, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But you know what? I don't want to ignore this very first one, though. The, the slave sl one title. The slave one. You know, it's a 60% drop. I know that sounds deceiving, but that's how the math works out. But it's minus three points. It only costs two now. If you're not familiar with the slave one... Um, the basic idea is that if you have a bank maneuver in one direction uh, plugged in, you can flip it to the other side uh, when it's time to reveal your dial. Absolutely huge. Uh, and for only two points, man, I think we're going to see some more Slave 1 out there. And it doesn't give you stress. Mm. But what's the Marauder title at? You're still only getting one title. I mean, Marauder title got jacked up in price. We'll, we'll get there here in a minute. I just want to do the overview. Um, for resistance, the biggest uh, decrease here was the uh, the Star Fortresses. All of them went down in points, five to three points. Not a not nothing absolutely huge, but one thing you'll see consistently as we going through here is FFG is trying to get large base ships on the table. And then for the first order, the biggest change here comes in the silencers, which all dropped in points, including Kylo Ren. Um, pretty interesting there, but Kylo does did lose. Whoops, what is happening? Computer. What are you doing? Sorry, guys. Computers being weird. The power of editing. All right, here we go. Um, Kylo should be actually not have this modification that is gone. <coughs> we'll go ahead and read that. Is it just Kylo or is it all the silencers? I think it's just Kylo or is it all of them? <clears throat> One way to find out. Either way. Uh, you notice another thing is a lot of the force users got cheaper as well. And then uh, we'll, we'll get to the generic here in a minute. I just want to kind of do a quick overview for each faction. And then we'll start going kind of ship by ship. So before we get into the, the nitty gritty math, which we'll, we'll hit at the end, uh, Will, which faction do you think got the biggest adjustment? I would have to assume Rebels. They were in the... Um... I, out of the three original factions, they were in the worst spot, so I would have to assume that they got the, the biggest help. Marcel? I think if you're just adding everything wise, I think Rebel and Extended, but if you're just looking at hyperspace, I would say that the Resistance got the biggest help because of those uh, bombers. Um, the point cost on the bombers and the veteran turret gunners are, are, are going to wreak some havoc. All right, so got the what first. about you? Uh, for myself, um, see, I know the answer. I mean, I know the math answer. Uh, yeah, which, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like competitively, which one? Competitively, I, I mean, I'm leaning towards change in extended and in hyper. I'm saying extended for rebels, uh, resistance for hyper. Um, I think, uh, man, I think the answer is. I think the answer is Rebels for both, to be completely honest. 
but but there's so many changes in scum that it's uh yeah but the scum changes are negative uh they they did both though they they went both ways we'll 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 get there we'll get there mm-hmm. um but let, let's go ahead let's start uh let's start parsing through some of this stuff now uh we'll go back to that other screen here we go so uh will you played the most amount of rebels in first edition take the wheel what do you see hi right, well we're gonna start with the b wings uh, Tindub and Braylon, and also the Blade and Blue Squadron, all getting reductions in cost. Okay, continue. Just keep keep rolling. All right. Well, uh, let's see. After that, we got um, arcs went unchanged. Um, let's see. Actually, I want to go. Let's go ship by ship. Might be the the best way of doing it here. Yeah. So let's go into so let's skip the Astromex, uh, which did get a small decrease. The two named ones are two D two in our five D eight. I got a small decrease, though. Uh, percentage wise, R two D two did drop that twenty five percent. Went from eight to just six points. So let's see. Let's just go on to the attack show. The only change was on Sabine Ren. I uh, went up by four points, ten uh, percent what she originally was, uh, which makes sense. Uh, very popular because of her ability to boost or barrel roll before a maneuver dial, which uh, I think she was the only one being played for the most part. So it makes sense that she was the only one going up. And it looks like, doesn't look like any changes to the Ossetux. And then we get to the Y wings. Uh, that got a pretty dramatic change because um, all all of them went down in price, including Dutch Vander, who was originally one of the most expensive ones. He's, he's He went down to just 39 points. But I think I actually want to uh, mention quick that the dorsal turret and the ion turret also went down in price. So the, the whole Y-Wing chassis itself uh, has gone down. You can get Dutch with an ion cannon turret for only 43 points, uh, which I think is going to help out all the Y-Wings. I think if you put just the turrets on them, uh, yeah, so Gray Squadron Bombers, the lowest initiative Y-Wing, with dorsal turret, costs 33 points now. So you can actually put six of them into a list, which is outrageous. I don't know if that's good or not, but you can definitely, you can definitely put it on the board. Uh, let's see. Moving on to K wings. K wings got a reduction in price. Uh, all of them got went down by three points. Uh, doesn't look like any changes to oh the configurations. That makes sense. Uh, they both stayed zero points. Let's see. Going still through them. So let's... Uh, let's... Gonna go, we'll go back to the crew. Yeah, let's just keep on ships right now. Uh, so that goes on to the E-Wing. E-Wing's got a huge change. All of them went down by over 10% in cost. Cornhorn going down by 8. And then uh, Garvin, the Rogues, and the Knaves all went down by 7 points. Ouch. It's fair. Because uh, they just weren't seeing play at their original cost. Uh, but now they're... They're in that under 30% of your list uh, for a corn horn. He's just at 66 points. So I think he's going to be able to squeeze in a lot more lists that he wasn't able to before. Let's see. the Oh, now we got some increases in points. And that's with the Hawk 290. Looks like uh, Kyle and the Scout went up by one. Janoris and Rourke. Or Janoris went up by two. And Mark Garnett, let's just shoot, uh, friendly shoot up initiative seven, went up by five points, 13% of his overall cost as an increase. Um, I can't can't talk about the Hawks without the Moldy Crow title. Mm-hmm. Moldy Crow went up by a lot of points. It was originally 12, now it's 18. 
18 uh, points. Yeah, that's a 50% increase in cost, uh, which is a pretty, pretty big, pretty big increase. That they wanted the Hawks to make a splash, and they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they they gave it the benefit of the doubt, and it was really good. I mean, there was nothing in the game that could hold on to two focus tokens, like anywhere close to that, and then giving you an additional gun as well. It was. Extremely undercosted. At 18, now you have to think about it before you put it onto the ship. Like you're bringing it for a reason. Uh, let's see. So after the Hawk, uh, touch briefly on the, the 1300s. Uh, Lando, Chewbacca, Han, and the Outer Rim Smuggler all went down um, by over 10% of their original cost. Which is going to be interesting if that gets them fielded. Uh, I mean, 12 extra points for Lando. I think I could, like, you basically can get a bunch of free upgrades on him then if you are running him before. So uh, that's very interesting. Let's see. So then after that, we got the RZ-1 A-Wing, uh, who looks like everybody got a change. Everybody got the talent slot. Uh, Jake, Arvel, the Green, and Phoenix all got the talent slot to match uh, the RZ-2 A-Wing in the Resistance faction, so, who started. I want, I want to take a second and talk about this one. So okay. the question is, compared to the Resistance A-Wing, is it good enough? Like, I, I still don't. Are, are the points even comparable? Y you don't get... The, you don't have a rotate. You you're 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 stuck in the front. I mean, the the dial is essentially the same, but I, mean, I don't know. You don't have three banks. Oh, there you go. You don't have. I mean, uh, you also don't have uh, heroic as a talent. Yeah. So I don't even know what you're putting in your talent slots for this. I would have preferred a second missile slot. Let them take barrage rockets. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I just don't know what you can do. I don't know what you're doing with the talent slots in it. I mean, I think Jake's like, I would probably just run Jake naked at 36 points. That sounds like a steal. But um, as far as like running generic <clears throat> Phoenix squadrons, yeah, I mean, because I'm, I'm, no I'm, com I'm comparing them on my other screen right now. The RZ2 is only two more points more expensive for a back arc, three banks that are blue. And I know it's hard to they'll never be fielded in the same squadron. I'm just kind of giving some comparisons like this. The ships don't fill the same role and I don't know like the difference of two points. We'll see. We'll see if a wings even get fielded. I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. And on top of that, the um, just overall, the abilities for, for the resistance, a wings, the RZ twos are, are so much better. Right, continue my friend. All right. So let's see. Uh, next change is for the uh, the sheathapeds. Uh, only Zeb and AP5 went up in price by two points. Um, AP5 was the lowest, or excuse me, the, the cheapest coordinating ship that you could put out there um, at 30 points and they increased it just a little bit, which is starting to be on, on par with all the other coordinating ships. Uh, but just a small increase there. Let's see. It doesn't look like there's any changes for the X-Wings. Which I think were being fielded. Most of their pilots were being fielded. At least to some extent. Agreed. Uh, the TIE Fighter. Uh, just the beam. The beam, same ability. So boost barrel roll. Uh, they give her a little bit of an increase. But I don't think... Has anybody been? Have you seen Rebel Tie Fighters? You were just I, mentioning about how we're not seeing A wings. Are we even seeing Tie Fighters? No, I have. I have not seen a single one. Not even Caption Rex. <laughs> yeah, because that's what uh, that might be the problem of. Like the Rebels have so many cheap options. You have Sheathpeds, you have Tie Fighters, you have Z ninety fives, and you have A wings. All kind of competing for that filler slot. 
I don't think either. I don't think any of them are really exceeding uh, beyond like uh, it's it's competition inside of the faction, and it, they just look extremely weak compared to other factions, which it's unfortunate. I was actually expecting some of those to go down in price. Yeah. Um, more so than just and, the A wings. And there's a there's a couple ships that as we go through this that I'm surprised didn't get movement, but at the same time, I think FFG needs to be. It's probably maybe being selective, like, hey, we can't adjust everything at once. We'll move some things, see how things respond, and um, and maybe 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 the it's not time yet for the Rebel Tie Fighter. It's not its time. That's fair. And uh, let me finish up with uh, the U wing, which basically has no changes at all. Um, none of the the conversion kit or the Saw Guerreras pilots get any change. Uh, let's see, then the VCX did get a, uh, which is weird, Chopper increased in points. We're from 72 to 80. Okay. But Kanan Jarrus, Hera, and the Lothal Rebel went down uh, a, a little bit in points. Kanan wow. Jarrus getting the, the, the largest redu reduction in price from 90 to 84. Why do we think that Chopper saw an increase it's a uh, stress mechanics i guess he still has his old ability is that right i think so jesus no, <laughs> he, he uh, jams now he jams instead of stresses yeah which if you bump you're not taking action anyway so it's kind of useless well i mean uh... yeah it seems very specific uh that they didn't uh, then maybe there's something chopper. coming down the pipeline or you know, so I don't know. I'm trying to trying to debate. I know that they <clears throat> they clarified that jam the jammer is the one that chooses now, so it's maybe a little mm -hmm. stronger. So maybe that's the reason why. Okay, I, that's that's. Kinda, I mean, I'm, gotta... I'm trying to stretch it a little bit, but yeah, but still, if it's... you're bumping, he's, he's... initiative two. So if somebody's bumping against him, they're not having oh, any tokens. Looks anymore. like there's there's a mistake here, though. Somebody said. Which could be a lot of, yeah. And uh, I'm double, I was double checking the squad builder. It actually says he's seventy points, he's 70. and not eighty. Easy to fix. So, yeah. So he actually got. So he <laughs> really, he really got a. Entire... <laughs> he got a decrease too. Okay, so that that yeah. makes more sense. That seems on par with all the other ones. So yeah. he's not he's not anything um, uh, special in uh, the VCX world. But yeah, they all got a small reduction because I, I, same thing. I just don't think that they were so, uh, like everybody. I dare not say the the words "ghost fin," but everybody, <laughs> I remember, everyone remembers the the boogeyman, uh, the horror stories. So I'm, I'm sure they. It's one of those things where you start high and then you kind of slowly work down to see where it where it lands, <laughs> which is probably more appropriate than. Uh, making it cheap and make uh, slowly increasing its price. Let's yeah, see. We, so I did see somebody in Phoenix doing. Uh, he was at the pretty the high tables for quite a while, um, with a ghost sheathapede list. Um, may, maybe these two extra points make a difference. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Well, you get the title for free then, more or less. Yeah, because the phantom titles were two points, so small reduction, but. It's enough to like squeeze that extra upgrade in, or uh, get a slightly better uh, pilot in your list. So interesting. Then, uh, yeah, we have the YT twenty four hundred after that, which got overall a reduction. Lebo got the biggest reduction, but he also is missing a crew slot now. I used to be able to combine him with C three PO. Uh, crew and generate uh, essentially calculate out all the time between Lebo's ability and uh, <laughs> C3PO. So they took him out. Uh, doesn't get a crew anymore. Lebo, need, Lebo flies the ship himself. Doesn't need nobody <laughs> with him. Put the team on my back. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's a gunner still, though. He can still have a gunner. Is there? Uh... Anyways, so that, that's interesting. But he got a, a significant decreasing cost for losing that slot 
and he's actually only at 88 points. So um, if you're not, if you're a wild space fringer and you don't use your crew anyways, it's only two more points just to bump up to Le Lebo anyways. So, yep. and he doesn't, but he doesn't, I, he no longer, he still doesn't have a talent slot, but I, honestly, I don't know, like the, the talent slots on these guys aren't, there's not very many good options. I don't think so. At least there's <laughs> one. It's trick shot. <laughs> oh, <they're> sure. <laughs> there's only one. So uh, it does. If if you can't equip that, it you might as well not equip anything. Right. Uh, should we talk about the the dash rendar FAQ? Uh, yeah. I mean, this while is we're a, at it, this is a good time to uh, to hit it. Go ahead. Because I I mean I I would say that's one thing that uh, dash lost in this. It's not exactly a points rebalancing, but um, if you're unaware, there's a Han Rebel Han crew that lets you shoot at Initiative 7, but afterwards you can't shoot outside of that arc. There's also a Hawk named Rourke that lets you shoot at 7. And before, they were allowing that you could activate Rourke first, and then Han Gunner. And now you cannot. Han Gunner must be first. So Be the... Because Han always shoots first. Yeah, all, see. All day. Uh, exactly. It's a thematic decision uh, to uh, FAQ out double tap dash. Uh, which is probably for the best. Everyone is going to agree. Yep. And you will f find that, uh, that ruling... I'll show it here for those of you who aren't aware of it. You'll find that on the X-Wing official rulings uh, forum post. And that'll be, if you scroll all the way down and go to the last page, you will find it. There it is, right there. So um, if you're not aware of this forum, it's important to look at it because they have some uh, pretty interesting, not interesting, but... Uh, some important rule interactions that maybe uh, might be confusing in our common questions. I would uh, definitely take a look at it when you have a chance. All right, let's move on to the Empire. Oh, and there's one. There's one more ship. Oh, sorry. Uh, but it, uh, it's just a Z95. <laughs> but it, it didn't have any changes. Uh, I, I do want to before before we go on to Empire. Uh, I was going to make a note that. Uh, for hyperspace changes, the only things that changed were the Y-Wing and the uh, YT-1300. Um, I think that they're really, I think that's one of the reasons why we saw the biggest increase in the 1300 is because it's hyperspace legal and it, if it's not being played in extended there's probably less of a chance that it's going to be get played in hyperspace. So uh, is I, I think the same thing goes for the Y wings that I think they actually got balanced for hyperspace more than extended. Okay. Does that, do you think that that would, that factors, we'll look at the other list and see if that or the other factions and uh, gauge it. Mm -hmm. uh, if like what, what changes in hyperspace or not? Because I think Ooh. Rebels were lacking significantly before. Hmm. Yeah. I, I... Okay. Hello? I, 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 well, before you jump off this one, I think you, you missed the two biggest, well, two biggest, two of the biggest changes, which are Leia. Leia. Oh, we, we, hadn't, mm -hmm. got, we hadn't gotten to crew yet. We yeah, because to... you were about to jump over to Empire here uh, okay. a second ago. So yeah, just just talking about the crew, but specifically just uh, Leia and um, what's the other one that went? Uh, Lando. Lando, yeah. Well, Lando's not so good, uh, not 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 comparatively. I mean, it's a focus or a focus of aid, but but Leia for sure getting that ability to K turn or or stop every third turn is is huge. So here we go, Leia Organa. You'll see it right there. Uh, now two points compared to eight. Mm. So minus that six steal. overall. That is a steal. Yeah, if you have four ships in your list, you need to and and somebody can hold a crew slot. You need to put Leia in it. Yeah, I, th I think this screams uh, U wing. I mean, with, oh yeah, with with U wings being able to stop every few turns and and rotate 
And then on top of that, new wings are cheap enough to be able to carry this and um, basically just, um, yeah, just, just throw, throw K turns around uh, to maybe an X wing support, support list, or even you get um, the like AP five or somebody like that, a cheap, cheap carrier to just basically carry this and that's it. All right. So this is uh, amazing. And I think the only crew that got an increase here looks like to be Mag Voyaro, which I mean it's a it's a good crew card. When you're getting attack, you get a uh, target lock on the enemy. Um, any of these? So we talked about yeah, Lando got decreased. The other big one, which we I have actually never seen competitively, is Bayes Malbus minus five points overall, yeah. down to three. Yeah, Baze is the one that lets you take a bunch of focuses for nearby enemies. Yep. And C3 yeah, nobody... minus four. As well. I mean, there's there's definitely a lot, lot of movement. A lot of movement in Rebels, for sure. Let's move on to the Empire now. Boom. Empire. You want to take this one, Marcel? Sure. I'm just going off your screen, so you scroll. So we're going off. Um, uh, the first ones are the the new, the Alpha Star, the Alpha, Alpha class Star Wings. Gunboats and in the chat. Gunboats got a, a a slight point reduction. They got they went down by three uh, points for for the generic, and then two points for for the other ones for the Royal Lieutenant and Major Vinder. Major Vendor, I think, being really good. Um, so I think that that really helped put makes Major Vendor a, a good choice at Initiative 4. Then we've got, scrolling down, we've got some configuration crews. The Lambda shuttles. Didn't see any change. I think that's, that's fair because uh, just about almost all of them were getting some type of play. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got the front arc, the back arc. Not great dials, but they don't really need it anymore with them being a support ship and having a, a back arc. Then you go into the TIE Advance. First, you get the um, TIE Advance with the Grand Inquisitor and the Seven Sisters. They went down by a couple points. I think the, the main one being the, uh, the Grand Inquisitor going down from 58 to 56 minus two points uh he still i i don't know i don't think they're gonna still see that much play the the difference in the points that that uh they dropped really isn't that big and their chassis is just i mean having that native force is good for some of those generics like the seventh sister or the inquisitor but um yeah i don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference especially when you see what's coming out in the next factions where some of them they they also carry those those force points mm -hmm. with them, but with the ability to do more as a result of having that force. Yeah, I think the other thing is I, I feel they're they're just so squishy. Like they die they die yeah. really easily. Which makes you wonder about the um you know, the next factions that are coming out that are force based but or that have all these nice little gimmicks but they're they have a similar type of chassis where they're have maybe less agility, a little more haul. So I think I I think I solved uh, the the question of why the the V ones are so expensive, and it was actually when I uh, was looking through about the purple evades mm -hmm. that the Jedi starfighters have. Yep, they do uh, spend a force to get an evade. I think that as long as this the V one has a white evade action and the force that they're going to inherently um, be more expensive because they can naturally double mod their, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh. Double, double uh, mod their, their defense dice. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they're tickling people and they're not going to kill anything. Tickle, 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 tickle. I mean, if you look at it, you can, yeah, you can put five of these five inquisitors on a board, and it'll be a pain in the butt to kill them. But then again, they're not gonna kill anything in return. Uh, so the next up is the Tie Advance, the X ones. 
And these did see a, a, a good drop. Darth Vader went down from 70 to 65. Uh, that, that's a good po point decrease. Um, how good of a decrease is debatable because once we get to the generics and talk about the tight, uh, the four slot that you want to have on this, uh, it's not so much of a decrease at, at the end of the day. Uh, Marik Steel, I think, becomes playable. Uh, especially with fire control system coming down in points, that means you get Marie Steel at 48 points, which I believe is, is is a is a really good value play. And then you know the rest of the the X ones also got a little bit of a point decrease, either two or three point decreases each. The tie interceptors, no changes there. Um, and I don't think anybody was was saying anything that they were good or bad. I think they were fine as is. The TIE Reapers, same thing. They No changes there, but they were getting plenty of play, but they weren't necessarily um, dominating um, aggressors. Now, aggressors, I'm a little bit surprised because nobody has, I have never, since I started playing 2.0, I have never seen anyone put an aggressor on anything mm -hmm. at all. I have never seen a single one being used and i'm not sure uh yeah you can take probably barrage rockets but then the bomber becomes a better carrier than the aggressor anyway so i don't know like i said with the y wings the uh, the dorsal turret and the ion turret did go down by two points mm -hmm. so i think i'd still count that as aggressors when overall down in points because they're the really the only turret carrier for the empire yeah, it's a good way to look at it, especially maybe on double edge. Um, yeah, maybe. Then the next one's coming up is the Punisher, and no surprise here, uh, point increase for this for this group. I, I think just having that that uh, linked action of boost to target lock is extremely powerful on an ordnance carrier, and red line seeing the biggest jump. Um, I think would he be the biggest ship cost? jump period that, that we see the eight points out of the, uh, from all the we, factions i will look we'll look at we'll look at the totals later i actually have a list of every single ship and uh and we'd be able to Got it. we'll, look well at it's it. a pretty big jump on red line he went up from 44 to 52 and just by that alone you would say that i would say that's not a big enough jump up however once you look at uh, advanced sensors and proton torpedoes, which is typically what's, um, or a trajectory simulator, which is typically what goes on this ship. All of that went up as well. So, uh, yeah, so it's going to be kind of a tough, uh, having this with with the way that it was typically built out with um, the advanced sensors and proton torpedoes. Now that's an extra 22 points. That's a 74-point ship now. So that went up significantly. Yeah, that's. You want yeah, to run that? From, you want to run uh, that same red line? It's gonna be. It's gonna cost you some. Yeah. So what did go? It was it used to be eight plus eight plus nine is seventeen fifty three. It went from sixty three to seventy four. So yeah, it went up by eleven. No, actually more than eleven. Anyway, it went up by a lot. Math fails. <laughs> All right, and the tag defenders all went down by two points. Uh, I think this is good. Uh, they're not low enough to where you're going to fit any of these with, um, you know, three of these on a list, which I think is where it becomes dangerous. So you're still limiting this two plus a support ship. Um, you're, you're, that's that's a, that's a pretty good. They're 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 probably the most powerful individual ship in the in the game. I I think, and. Rightfully so, they're they're costed that way. Agree. You know, I'm still surprised that Vessery costs more than Rexler Brath. Mm. I, I just feel that that Rexler Rexler works so much better by himself. Mm -hmm. You know, like because you're, you're you're only getting if you have a defender in your in your list, most likely you have three ships, maybe. And, you know, you don't have those same shenanigans where you have auto target locks uh, for Vessery. I mean, because if you're taking Vessery, that means you're kind of, uh, if, if you're trying to lean on that combo, you're probably taking TIE Advanced, 
which I guess they got cheaper. Maybe there's something still there to be explored. I don't know. Maybe. Mm. We'll see. Just, no, some, I, just some thoughts. Yeah, there. I agree. And, and on top of that, uh, with the um, with the, with van sensors going up, the fire control system becomes the most useful um, sensor for these. And um, basically, basically what this does, it gives them a free fire control system. And now they got higher control system for the same points that they used to be. Yeah, actually bring up a good point because they, uh, because advanced sensors went up by two points, your advanced sensor defender stayed the same price price point. So, your fire control system of uh, defender. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, Tie Fighters. No change in the Tie Fighters. I don't think there's uh, anybody who was necessarily crying for one, nor did they need it. Uh, they're in the, they're they're costed as they should be. The Tie Phantom, the M MDAR test pilot, the lowest one. They he got a slight decrease in points, and then um, the rest of them got stuck the same with with Whisper getting two point increase to 54. But I think the, the biggest change here that everybody probably knows by now is that they can no longer have uh, Vader crew. Now they're they're stuck with Gunner. So um, try to figure out a good way to, to put one of those very cheap dorsal turrets on these things. Uh, I know you're gonna probably need some welding material and or some, some duct tape and crazy glue because I haven't been able to put a dorsal on one of these yet, but I don't know. Maybe maybe later on there's going to be a gunner that that that's um, that might be. It says fifth brother. What does the fifth brother do? The fifth brother, he's so good. What? <laughs> so um, his. Uh, <laughs> I'll read it. I'll read it to you. So fifth brother says. While you perf it gives you a force and it says okay. while and it, the points went down on him as well. While you perform an attack, you may spend one charge to change one of your eyeballs to a crit. I think it's still good. Yeah, yeah, but it went down to nine points. Yeah. So e even if you're just using it on defense, it's still worth it on a phantom. Yeah, it's so good. So Vader, Vader out, fifth brother in. Um, yeah, so actually, if you switch it y out, yeah, uh, YASB doesn't have the gunner slot on them yet. So, actually, I'm looking at the wrong one, eh, I'm looking at the defender still. Fail, all right. So, we we're talking about the and there's so well, just double, that. uh, just double checking. There's literally no other gunner that can be put in that slot. At this yeah. point, well, that, about, makes, that uh, does well, anything. Well, you can do, no, actually, no, you, you can't. You can do BT one, I guess. If they're uh, if Darth Vader was in your squad, like performing an attack, you can change the hit to a crit result for each uh, stress token the defender has. Mm -hmm. I guess that's that's technically mm -hmm. usable, but none of the other ones are skilled bombardier, veteran turret gunner, uh, veteran tail gunner, hotshot gunner, or agile gunner. Don't work. So it's yeah. BT or fifth brother only. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's still, still not Vader. Still not as good as Vader. I mean, it's not as good, but I mean, it's you still got toys. I think so. My prediction. I know this is bold prediction here. I mean, I don't really think that's bold. But uh, next point updates, fifth brother points are gonna go back to where it was, maybe even higher, because people are just people are gonna lean hard fifth brother on whisper. And then put Darth Vader on a different ship in the list. Yep. yep. <laughs> that sounds about right, actually. Now, I'm going to say, I, you know, obviously two of the top four lists that the Phoenix Open they just came back from was, um, you know, four of these with Juke. Both and illegal. Brought, Both lists, both by the illegal, way, are illegal. Yeah, <laughs> by, by only four points, uh, because really the only thing that changed was the um, Juke going up by one. That, I still think you're going to see these ships all over the place because you could still, you know, for example, you could still fit four of those Sigmas with Juke and then put a fourth ship on there like uh, like Major Vinner, for example, um, at Initiative 4, matching them at Initiative 4. You can fit him with um, 
with a Van Slam, the the title, Ion Cannon, or something like that, and still be able to to provide that that flanking or or some type of ship that's tough to kill at 47 points because three of these with juke still leaves you 47 points in the empire there's there's a lot that you can do with 47 points still so i still think you're going to see a lot of phantoms with juke around yep right. or three of these plus um plus a lambda shuttle with some type of support let's keep on rocking there you go uh, you got the Thai Bomber, Tom Spren, all of these guys went up by two points, except for Major Reimer going up by four, and Captain Jonas going up by seven. Um, yeah, that had to happen. I don't, I don't see the... Um, yeah, basically, they just had to happen. Yeah, they they're, they were cheap, and they were good. Makes sense. <laughs> Did anything happen to Mirage Rockets? Uh, yes, they went up too. Okay. To how much they were six? I don't remember off the top of my head. They went to seven, so okay. a little bit, but that's that's enough. The tight strikers, no change. Um, I see somebody getting getting uh, getting salty in the chat. Where is it? For, not sure. ND Justice thirteen. <laughs> Real fanboy. What, is, what yeah. does he want justice for? I don't. I don't know. No, we were just talking about that squad because a lot of people were running it. That's all. I mean, I don't think yeah. any of none of none of us even ran that competitively. Yeah, I don't think any of us have. Uh, well, I I know I'm not an imperial flyer for the for the most part. If people know me, I'm more on the scum and uh, <laughs> resistance side. But uh, yes, I I did not spend the last six months complaining about Vader Sloan. Sloan didn't get any. Both of which did not get any 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 hits, which was a surprise to me. <laughs> all right, let's keep going and anyway. Other stuff. Uh, right. uh, to keep, to keep uh, sympathizing to these Imperials who, uh, uh, let's see, the Strikers didn't get any any change. I don't think there's any anybody's crying over this. Nope. I think the, the biggest one, again, going back on um, what we talked about earlier with the uh, FFG just trying to put big bases back on the back on play, the all the VT. Uh, 49 decimators all got an eight. No, not all. Uh, Patrol leader and Chernu got an eight point decrease, while Oiken got a six point decrease, um, which I think puts them about. I mean, if you look at the changes that they made with the YT 1300 mm -hmm. as well as the YT 2400, it basically keeps them in that 80 point range. Yeah. Uh, and slightly, it keeps them about there, and the VCX being at, averaging in about seventy points to eighty points also. So I think they're 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 kind of following that same. These ships, uh, double arcs, fit that same type of mold, um, having some type of uh, you know they're 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 following a script as far as the big bases go so far with the Imperials and the Rebels. All right, right. And let's uh, uh, let's hit those crew. Imperial crew. All right, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin uh, minus four. What does Grand Moff do? I don't even know. Grand Moff Tarkin. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Let, take a look at the other stuff while I can do it. All right, so the Seventh Sister went down by three points. I think that actually becomes a per that that becomes steel. Uh, that adds a point and that adds a really good ability. I think if I'm not mistaken, the Seventh Sister is the one that. Gives you the. Um, let me go back here. Alrighty, Where's... so uh, Grand Moff Tarkin requires has two charges. Requires a Targa lock uh, action on your bar Imperial only during the system phase. You may spend two charges. If you do, each friendly ship may acquire a lock on a ship that you have locked. I have not seen anybody uh, run Tarkin, so I'm not surprised to see the price drop here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. And same thing with the ample Pal Pal Palpatine. I, I haven't really seen anybody use Palpatine. I think Palpatine. I think the reason people haven't used a lot of these is just because how good Vader and Sloan are. So I don't. I still don't think you're going to see a lot of play for these because Sloan is still ten points, Vader is still fourteen points, and those two really are the best uh, crew that you can get. And if you're if you're spending that many points for crew, and you're not putting either Sloan or Vader. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't make any sense. I mean, even Palpatine, who's 
should be good and didn't really get much of a difference from before, still not good enough compared to those two. All right, we got to take a second and talk about this. Hmm. So Admiral Sloan doesn't get any change. I know that at least recently, <clears throat> excuse me, recently we haven't seen Sloan make a splash. But looking at all these changes, that is the one thing that kind of stands out to me in the sense that I'm curious. I mean, I, I know if I'm playing Imperials, one of the first things I'm going to start looking at is Sloan because I'm like, wait. If all these other things are more expensive, but Sloan is the same, I mean, that Sloan kind of seems like a good choice to go for. What do you guys think? I, I think so, too, but as far as if, you, if you're trying to play competitive, I'm looking at it more from just the... Uh, is that you, Coffin, or... William, sorry. So, the um, yeah, I'm just looking at it from the fun perspective. Admiral Sloan, so they got ru- rid of R3A2, for a reason, and they made Asajj use a force to give stress for a reason. Basically, they, they started taking all these steps to try to prevent um, stress stacking on somebody and creating really what amounts to a negative play experience. No fun. And I see Admiral Sloan being falling into that into that realm of no fun. So I actually want, I, I don't think he's that hard to play against. I think you can fly around, uh, you know, there, there's a way to just make it work and beat it. It just creates a game that's not fun. It creates kind of like a, like your, um, somebody mentioned it before, like that Ender's game where you're protecting one ship and everything, everything else is around it, trying to get to the, to, to the goal. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, it just creates that type of environment where, it stops being fun after a while. I even saw the um, the game you had at the Phoenix Open with Tyler um, Tyler Tippett trying to get past Sloan. With that Sloan was on that mm-hmm. Reaper, which is up on and, uh, on YouTube now. Yeah, I just saw you, you you put it up today, um, and I felt bad for Tyler. I mean, he played it pretty well. Uh, he made a couple mistakes, but for the most part, played it pretty well. Uh, but it's just not it's not fun. I mean, it it, it punishes you for playing well. It punishes you for getting getting a ship out of position and killing it um, with double stress. And there's so many ships that that rely on some type of action. It's just, mm-hmm. uh, I, I would say, just completely ban this card. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 we're still sympathizing to the Imperials. Um, sorry. No, no, I mean, no, you're, you're not sympathizing. You, you're, you're saying that you want, you, you would have preferred... I was saying in response to uh, somebody who was saying that we're... The <laughs> Where, yeah. Uh, anyway, the, the last thing is he talked about the fifth brother and uh, triple zero, but triple zero is really more of a scum crew. Yeah, we have. I haven't seen anybody really put it in uh, in imperial lists. I haven't either. All right. Even though he would fit pretty well with a um, lambda shuttle. <clears throat> All right. Let's take a look at scum. All righty. So. I'll take a look at this one. So uh, we start with the aggressor, your IG-88s. And you notice right off the bat that their points went down. It went far enough that you actually can fit three of them without upgrades in a list. Is it good? I have no idea. Will I try it? Absolutely. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I have not seen anybody uh, do well competitively with... uh, with robots, some people were trying to fly them in in, in a very um, very similar fashion, where they were, you know, like you you take like B and C and you load them out and, and you try to do those same shenanigans, but but you can't. So uh, that's uh, that. You can still. This actually helps a lot, though, because they also reduce the cost of their title, and they reduce the cost of IG-88D. So all in all, you can still put A, B, and then a really healthy um, support ship with I-88D crew. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say um, Lando. So you can put Lando, Trickshot, I- I-88D, and then you can still have A and B with, um, with things supporting and stuff like that. So... Uh, I, I think the changes to the to the robots or are, are more significant than what they would appear at first. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're gonna see we're gonna see some people giving it a shot. I'm I'm a fan. All right, uh, we'll go uh, the Y wing. All right, now this is where uh, I think we're gonna see some shenanigans. You know, Will was talking about earlier that the Y wing price went down. You see that the generics here on the Y wing in Scum did the same. Drea went up because I mean it's it's it has that range six capability where it can be super far away and still give those uh, offensive re rolls. Hey. Actually, I want to I wanna make a note. Drea went up by two points. Dorsal went down by two points. Yeah. Which is the same cost. <laughs> exactly. Totally fair. So, um, I mean, you're, she doesn't cost any more. And you can fit four of the uh, Initiative 1 Crimora goons with veteran turret gunner and uh, dorsal turret with Drea and dorsal turret. That's 200 points. We're going to see people trying it because that is a ton. That is a bucket of dice. Each of those goons are tossing five dice in an ideal situation. Uh, plus, Drea gets to shoot two, and they're getting rerolls on all those shots, assuming she has uh, them in the arc. Uh, that that could be bad. You don't want to joust that. Don't do it. <laughs> all right. We'll get back to crew here in a sec. Oh, where'd my mouse go? I lost it. There it goes. All right. Um, then we get to the customized YT-1300. No change there. Escape craft, consistent with what we saw in Rebels. They're raising the cost on coordinate platforms. Uh, I know that when we started seeing coordinate in the in first edition, when they first come up came up out of... From Epic into regular play, people went, are you sure, FFG? This is a really good action. You're going to give it to us? Okay. And people have been using these escape crafts as coordinate machines in their list. Uh, I'm really glad to see the point cost go up because uh, just having a coordinate craft that's really cheap in your list is was or is still really good. And I honestly think even with the increase, they'll still see play. Um, it's... It's having coordinate in your list is still really good. Feng Fighters stay the same price. Um, I understand. Fen, I, Fen Rao, I don't think should have changed or Old Tarak. I was kind of expecting maybe some change in the uh, lower initiative ones, uh, but no shakes up. No shake up there. Fire Spray Patrol Craft. This is where we get to the king of, uh, <laughs> of the Fire Spray. Boba Fett goes up by six points no changes in the slots uh, but a pretty significant bump and if you include the changes to marauder which we'll get to here in a little bit um you, you can't i mean you can feel that same boba fett if you'd like the boba fett han gunner with the marauder title but it's going to cost you a pretty penny it's going to be significantly more expensive other fire sprays stay the same and maybe the reason there is just maybe the Extra tax on Boba Fett will encourage people who like the fire spray to use the other ones without reducing their price. I think uh, the one that's probably going to see the the biggest play is um... never mind. I was trying to. Uh, I was stuck in 1.0 for a second there. I was thinking uh, the guy that drops the bombs in uh, with the three hearts or three. He still does that. Iman. Yeah, he still does it, but he can't do it after the fact. Right, yeah, no. So I was thinking with the uh, Slave 1 title changing, changing directions, but never mind. Stuck in the past. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let the past die. All right. G1A Starfighter. Uh, we see some reduction in Zuckus and the Gans Feinsman. Uh, I, I think maybe the reason for that is that pretty much Forlom is the only thing we're seeing out there. Forlom is really good, and with him not changing cost, I think this is... This is the one of the the crown pieces of the scum faction, uh, being able to hand out stress, get multiple actions, give your stress to somebody else, do a K turn, stop multiple turns in a row, just taking up space. Forlom still really good. Hawk two ninety. Again, we're gonna get to the crew and gunners here later. Hawk two ninety. 
goes uh, goes up in price for Torquil Mux and Paylob, the best ones, uh, up by two points. Dace Bonearm down one. Dace still struggling to see play. It's like, hey, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna play. It just has has such a conditional ability that it's it's really hard to get it off. We'll see if anybody actually gives it a shot. I saw it once in first edition on the table. He didn't do well. <laughs> then we get to the jump master, Marcel's uh, <laughs> the the ship that everybody is uh, it keeps poking Marcel. Hey 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 jump master hey jump master. Um, I mean we we kind of previewed it already. It's one of the bigger changes. Tell Travera. 10 points cheaper from 60 down to 50. Dengar goes from 64 to 58. Six point difference there. Manaru minus nine points. Contracted Scout minus six points. You're getting the title either significantly cheaper or even expert handling, uh, which is a really good EPT on these guys to get that red barrel roll, turn it into white. Um, really good. Really, really good on them. So uh, trying to just alleviate some of the pressure on there, see if maybe we get some jump master play. Some people yeah. did mess around with Dengar, and I'm curious to know if that, was, that reduction of six points is enough to get Dengar more on the table. What do you guys think? I, I think so. Um, I, I'm one of those that played with Dengar. I played with Dengar, uh, Han, Han um, YT-1300 plus Fenrau to get three sixes on the table. I also tried Dengar. Fenrau and a coordinating or either so I tried it with both all, all three and also with a um, with the tugboat on there and Dengar always performed pretty well um, especially early on that nobody wants to shoot them they go after everything else at the end then you can start turning your arc and you know then you're not so much worried about it um, because that initiative says you can arc dodge and you can you can play around a little bit more. So I, I think Dengar still becomes a, a viable piece. You're not mm -hmm. going to see many of these around. I think Telchavero, Manaru, and Contract the Scout for the most part are are not worth their cost. If you're going to spend any money on any of these or any points on any of these, you're always better off going with a with a YT thirteen hundred. I mean, the Contract the Scout. Essentially, is forty six points same as a YT thirteen hundred. YT thirteen hundred comes with two arcs and more tools. Yeah, agreed. All right, the Kirax fighter, Karaz fighter, Kyrax fighter. However you want to say it, no change. Real exciting. Sorry about that. Those of you who are fans, keep on trucking. Maybe something will happen soon. Then we get to one of my favorite ships in the Scum Faction, the Lancer Class Pursuit Craft. Reductions across the board. And I think the one that automatically gets most people's attention is Asajj Ventress. I mean, she she was the, one of the darlings of the, sc <laughs> of the Scum Faction. Gold Squadron's very first uh, alt art card, by the way. Will a second edition one be coming? Maybe. Anyway, um... Minus 8 points, 84 for Asajj. 84 points down to 76. Um, she's still a Force user, still really good. Um, I, I I think we're going to see it. You know, at the Gold Squadron Classic, I know it was early in 2nd edition, but Marcel flew uh, with some success, Asajj, at her then higher point cost, uh, giving some proof of concept there, and maybe with the reduction, uh, she'll see some more play. Shadow yeah, Paint. In the um, yeah, in the squad notes, I shared a, a list with Asajj Han and uh, somebody else, a third ship. So just just look at that later on. Asajj, I like Asajj. <laughs> uh, Shadow Port Hunter, Sabine Ren, and Ketsu all get a reduction of four points. You know, one thing I've always wanted to do because for some reason I ended up with how many do I have? I have I have five. I have five Lancer class pursuit crafts. Because of either winning them or gifts, or <laughs> it's I have five of them. I would like to run a three Shadowport Hunter list, and with a couple extra points, maybe uh, maybe that's possible. We'll see. The Kimogila, no change yet. Nothing there. We'll wait. Uh, we'll see if people start to play it. M3A Interceptor, all get reductions. Bye bye bye. Question mark. I don't know. Um, still, 
right? This this ship is in just is in a weird place. Is it an interceptor? Is it is it an arc dodger similar to like the interceptor for the Imperials or the A wing for Resistance or Rebels? I don't know. It just kind of fits. I feel like it doesn't fit a role yet, and I've I haven't seen any of them use except for Sarasu. I think Sarasu might have a might have a spot in some type of scum swarm. But I mean if if you're running a swarm, I guess you're running Drea, so offense over yes. defense. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say is that uh yeah. the spacer uh got the one point reduction to let you field seven of them. Uh -huh. with four points left over. I don't think uh I I feel the same way that I don't I don't have a lot of Good ideas about what they're running, uh, except for they get a. They, I think they did get a little bit of buff because they can hold cannons still. Like like a oh you're right they can still hold cannons. Uh, kind of like a so, free cannon. Yeah, like you know, like a free <laughs> cannon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I mean, uh, they got a little bit of a buff. I don't know. I I don't like the twenty eight point. I like it doesn't seem like much, but uh, the difference between twenty nine and twenty eight is is i guess kind of big like being able to squeeze in that seventh ship if you're trying to run on a bunch of them <laughs> the cartel uh cartel jam cannon spacer yeah oh man how many i mean you, that's a lot of jam tokens seven gems jam seven jamming beams oh the mirror opponent will never have a token yeah <laughs> but still be alive <laughs> 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 anyway <laughs> love it love it uh modified tie fighter no changes yet uh brand new ship i'm not surprised that nothing got changed there except for captain sevor who did get increased by two points i mean his ability is so good if you're not familiar with captain sevor uh i'll i'll read that to you y you need to get acquainted because uh this ship is annoying I'm um, I'm actually surprised he didn't go above uh, form and approach. Yeah, that that I I agree with. So uh, his ability, Captain Sevor, <clears throat> sitting at um, thirty points. While you defend or perform an attack, before attack dice are rolled, if you are not in the enemy's bullseye firing arc, you may spend a charge, and if you do, the enemy gains a jam token. It's like, oh hey, you want you want a jam? You want to, you want to jam? We just you're just handing out jam all over the place. You're reducing tokens, um, and the fact that it is when you defend or perform an attack, I think that's just a huge part. You know, you just you, you set them up on the flank and you just start t ripping people's tokens away. I mean, it's it's really good. Thirty points. Uh, I think it's still good. I think a, a hop should have gone up to uh, comparatively thirty-two. I think a, a hop is that how you pronounce them? Just because uh, with you, you're going to see a lot more, a lot more big base or medium base ships uh, on the table. So oh, I have. Uh -huh. Well, maybe maybe they left them at that point so that you have some type of large base counter, seeing that all the points went down. Yeah, because um, I, I I've been flying them in that Aces League, and I've been I, there's been a couple times where I've gotten him to shoot five dice. And a TIE fighter putting out five dice is, is just amazing when with trick shot. I mean, it's crazy. But but see, the thing with Ahav, uh, so if you're not familiar with Ahav, it says while, uh, while you defend or perform an attack if the enemy ship is larger than you, roll an, an additional attack die. It's, it's completely dependent on the ability of, of the list, excuse me, that your opponent brought. Like you have zero control over it. So I think that's why we won't see, at least not for a while, uh, an increase in that one. That's my opinion. We'll see. Quad jumpers, our favorite little toot toot boot boots. Oh man, all increased in price. Not surprised that Jack Who Gunrunner up four points, thirty two points. I still think those things are gonna see play. Initiative one, moving people on rocks is still good, and at thirty four points, I think now it's maybe just priced more fair. It's a price yeah, I think the you... original cost, right? Like in first edition, they were seventeen points. So uh, they were, yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah. yeah, 17 with uh, the two point modification on them. Yeah, so I actually think you're gonna see a lot more uh, single on cars than uh, like the double Jakku gun runners. Uh, there's a lot of people just flying like a single on car in the list mm -hmm. as like their filler. I think you're gonna see a lot more because for one more point, he he gets the better initiative and he gets like a, a really good pilot ability. So I think uh, you're gonna see people just jump right for him. I I doubt you'll see any of the other ones. Uh, Sarko Planker, Constable Zubio. Nah, their abilities are too weird and conditional. That's the problem there. Zubio is actually pretty good with uh, proximity mines. I know he starts getting a little bit pricey, but with proximity mines, I just, um, I just don't. He doesn't pull his weight though. Like it's it's a cute trick. No, no you could be a Curax out there for that same price though. Yeah, you get have extra back. health and a third third die. Anyway, we continue. The Skurg H6 Bomber. Price reduction. My heart broke a little when I saw the price got reduced. I understand that people weren't flying them. I understand, uh, FFG, that you sold a lot of Skurgs and you'd like to see them played. But... Um, I, I need to give you a, an update on your, your thing here. Okay, is there uh, a mistake on that? Their, their gunner slot is new. They didn't have it before. Ah, uh, yes. Gunner. Because right, they have they had a turret slot and no gunner slot, which means you couldn't put butter and turret gunner on them before. Mm -hmm. uh, but now you can. Now you can launch bombs and shoot twice. That's FFG. <laughs> yeah, but you're, that Nim's going to be like 100 points if you're doing that, though. So I, I don't care. I don't want to see Nim. Nim can be 200 points. I just don't want to see Nim again. Yes, yes, I did commission two pieces of art of <laughs> Captain Nim. And you know what? I don't care. I don't care. Mm. Sorry. Okay, I'm done being triggered. We're good. Yeah. So reduce there. Captain Nim, minus four points. Lock Revenant, minus three. Soul Six, so minus three. But I think, uh, like you said... I mean, you know what, dude? Let's just take the trajectory simulator out of it. If you just take the lock revenant with the veteran turret gunner and a dorsal turret, you got 10 health rolling around. I mean, that seems really good. You take a door, uh, Drea as well. That seems really good. Seems like a good list. That's a lot of health. That's 39, 39 health, 38 health. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot. I don't. They. I think they're struggling to find their role. I mean, Captain Nim's not as good as he was, but I still think they're struggling. So I'm not surprised a, a small decrease in the new slot. I have to. I, ha I have to. I need to address the chat here really quickly. Tret says at Gold Squadron Podcast, "I love Nim." Well, you know what, Tret? I was gonna send you Panera chips. I was gonna do oh. it this week. I had them on my desk. You know what? I'm eating those chips after this cast. Thank you very much. They're my chips now. Anyway, hashtag tips for Tret. Nope, not anymore. Star Viper. <laughs> Star Viper, moving on. Uh, only change here is to Guri. One point more expensive. One point more expensive. I mean, sure. I, I, I'm... I guess I'm not like this was one of those when I looked at it and was like, okay, one point more expensive. I was a little confused by it because we're seeing Guri play and the ability to get the um, extra focus is good. But I wonder if this is more attacks on the being initiative five and having that funky barrel roll that's kind of like a mini boost and a barrel roll combined in one. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, you mostly saw Guri with advanced sensors, and advanced sensors went up a little bit. So, I mean, it it's uh, it's one of those like some of it's all of its parts, you know. So I I I don't see the. I think it's, I do agree that it's weird. Why why just one point? Like, is that even significant change to warrant? Yeah. I yeah, that was, that was, I just kind of got, got there on the list. I was like, oh, I guess. <laughs> just And just moved on. Alrighty, so 
Then we get to uh, the last ship that had a change here, the YV-666. Um, the original ship, part of the Gold Squadron special. Um, all get reduced here. Lats Razi, minus five points. Bosk, minus four. Trandoshan Slaver, minus two. Moralo Ival. Dion Moralo. Moralo Dion, minus two. Uh, there, there's, there's, a, there's a joke in there. Pretty obvious. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all reduced, uh, which inspired the Gold Squadron paint casts. Uh, Trend Ocean Slaver, or not sure, but YV666 paint uh, with a Skippy the Force goes on it. Super excited to see that, by the way. Um, I think we're going to see some more play because not only did uh, did that happen, they also got uh, – I forgot to uh, update this on, on here. They also all added a gunner slot. So now Dengar uh, Gunner is a possibility on them or any of the other gunners that uh, are available. And did they, did they but lose they also a crew? lost. Yeah, I was about to say that they lost oh, a crew okay. on all of them except except for the Trand Ocean Slaver. The Trand Ocean Slaver still has three crew, and uh, yeah, that's still really good. I mean, just, the party bus is back, baby. Yeah, not uh, you can fit, and actually, uh, you can fit again. Going back to the IGs, you can fit the I. G eighty eight A, IG eighty eight B, a Trend Ocean Slaver with the IG eighty eight D crew, an Ion Cannon to get that benefit from the um, from the um, IG eighty eight B plus something else I forgot. But anyway, uh, and I mean that's that's some you th you're talking about robots, and then on top of robots you put a Trend Ocean Slaver. And they're all coordinate, not coordinating, but they're all mind linking little uh, tractor beam, not tractor, uh, coordinate, calculate tokens around. Uh, I, I, I think that's pretty good. Really good, actually. Yeah, yeah doing uh, the Trench Ocean Slaver, I just double checked it. It also lost uh, its third crew. They all oh, just it? have two okay. crew and one gunner. Oh, sad. Okay. Must have just I'm double a mis mistake on the. Thank you for double checking me. Alrighty, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff to go through. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, and again, I was compiling from a bunch of different, uh, different things for our purposes tonight. So, I, I love my um, backup. Is, can uh, can I ask you guys about that gunner slot? Yeah. Like, it, I mean, it's just, uh, what are the named ones that work? Oh, you said Dengar, right? Dengar. Yeah, Dengar is probably the biggest one. Boss. Extra, extra damage. Oh, that's Bosk. true. Bosk. Yeah, that yeah, makes a lot more Bosk sense. Under, right? You can put, put Bosk on a Trend Ocean Slaver. You've got a double, not a double tap, but you got basically an old school gunner uh, Trend Ocean Slaver. Sweet. Oh, man. Say no more. Uh, I totally forgot Bosk existed as a gunner. Yeah. Yeah, so just you shoot once with, with, this, with the Trend Ocean, and then you miss, you shoot again. Yep, 66 points. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not at all. All righty. Then we get to the the crew. I guess uh, let's just go through some of the the not just crew the cards here for scum. Looking at the titles really quickly, uh, Marauder title goes up three points. So as we said there, the the uh, year two you've been in the meta for a while. Tax Moldy Crow, which we mentioned with Rebels, up six points. And here's uh here's FFG for Andrasta and Slave One saying, please play something else. They're dropping the price there. And uh, Marcel did mention earlier the reduction one point uh, down here. Only a single point for IG2000 crew. Fearless stays the same. That's a talent slot. And then we'll go ahead and go to the Gunners. Right there. Everybody stays the same except for Han. He goes up eight points from four to 12. You know what that is? That's an oopsie. That's a, oh yeah, that is a good card. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do not see a free focus when you're about to shoot. <laughs> As may, maybe this might be good. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's now priced appropriately uh, along okay. with all of the other force using crew. Because it's actually... I think it's better than a force using crew. It is. It's it, you can do it with more than one 
one uh one die oh but you get a stress so <laughs> and you can choose when to use it or not i mean it's yeah it, it's basically old school expertise which is amazing yep and then we'll get to the crew here most of them staying the same the the ones that decreased in price uh Sicatro Visago, minus one point. That's the one that lets you swap out illicits. Some Shenanes, uh possible there. Forlom goes down to two points from three. Zuckus, minus one point, down to two points. Jabba the Hutt, minus two. We still haven't seen Jabba do anything crazy yet. So uh, maybe we'll see him on the decline until somebody actually finds a spot for him. And uh, maybe, maybe on one of those cheaper YV666. And then Maul goes down two points, down to eleven, which is another card that we haven't seen too much, uh, too much use from. Do you think so? Now that we we kind of sort of know what dark side upgrades are, but we they're not, uh, <laughs> they haven't really been completely identified. Maul on a Trandoshan slaver with hate. Well, no, you still need the force talent slot, dude. You do? Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. It doesn't give you the talent slot. Oh, I'm so sad. So it's just for Asajj. Sorry, I got excited there. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, and I think Asajj can already use Dark Side, so it's it's just for Kanan and Ezra on the Rebels. Lame. Yeah, because you can put hate on Asajj. Lame. Yeah, so you, I mean, sorry, got excited. I, I'm gonna try it someday. Uh, I've been meaning to put Maul in an Ezra Sheathapeed, uh, and I just don't. <laughs> it just doesn't make doesn't make any sense. Why? Why? It's like sixty something points. It doesn't. <laughs> don't. Don't do it. <laughs> and then, last but not least, the Astromex for Scum. Uh, Genius gets raised from zero to two because I don't think there should ever be zero point upgrades so raise the two uh other ones stay the same genius is still super annoying even in second edition because he gets he turns you and he lets you play first edition for a couple turns it's like hey yeah as I, long as you got bombs i don't think they realize that genius works really good if you have seismic bombs because oh, yeah. if you if you fly it right you don't get hit by that seismic bomb even though you genius dropped it so they're depending on it, it like no it, it should not be free i agree <laughs> stop it ffg stop it all right um yeah then we get to the resistance take take the wheel will Ooh, let's see what we got here um yeah let's, let's uh let's keep it by pilot or uh by ship i guess uh let's start with uh the resistance savior the MG100 Star Fortress. Uh, everything got a reduction of at least three points. Uh, Finch got only uh, four points. Um, ben, T, Vinny, Cat, and the Cobalt got a reduction of five. That's, um, pre that's pretty aggressive, don't you think? Pretty aggressive reduction? Mm, no, because trajectory went up by seven. So... Yeah, but if if you're not running them with trajectory, you're gonna get a discount. If you are, it actually went up a little bit in points. Yeah, I, I, they, they, that, that this is nuts because Gunner went down. Um, the veteran Gunner went down, and these these were all already. I mean, you've got there. Is there another one that has three uh, native arcs? Is there another nope, ship? Out there's not. There's not another ship. They have it's certainly not one that can b drop or launch bombs. Yeah, so you've got you're, you're covering your rear with the bombs, and then you've got three arcs covering your sides in the front, and you got veteran gunner uh, dropping from eight to six. Um, I mean, this is the closest thing to a walking tank turret that's in the game. Closest thing to 1.0. Uh, some of the things that they were trying to move away from, and they all got a buff. I think. Uh, at the very beginning of the podcast, Dion or you talked about basically what FFG wants to put big bases on the uh, on the board. MG100 is not one of the big bases that was getting left out. I mean, it, maybe there was um, more Finch and Eden getting on there than the other ones, but that doesn't make 
them bad. I mean, I, I think this is under cost, and I think they're going to... Uh, when I said at the very beginning of the podcast that I said that the uh, Rebels might have gotten the best extended um, change out of the deal, and the Resistance got the best for Hyper, I, it's because of these guys. This is just with this with uh, veteran turret gunners, they're, they're just nuts. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's still only there's there's still limited a little bit. I mean, as far as because uh, that that mobile dice, that second shot's still only ever going to be two, unless it's a uh, I guess range one. But I I still think that these are like hundred point ships, though. I'm trying to think of uh, Dion, you took uh, you took Finch to the Outrider Cup recently. Yeah. How many how many points was your Finch? Gosh, I can't I couldn't probably about you. 90, 90, 100, I sounds, assume. Sounds about right. Yeah, in, in the current points, he'd be more expensive overall because of the trajectory change. Okay, okay. So, like, this, I mean, you're not, you can't spam, like, three of them anymore. I mean, this is going to be, like, your lead ship of your squadron. So, we'll see. We'll see if, uh, um, how they shake out in both extended and hyperspace. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, I... Could, you could run three of the, the generics. I just, you can't run three of the generics with trajectory, though. Yeah, so I, that's right. fine though. That's probably that's probably for the best, 50, to be honest 60, with you. Yeah, that doesn't fit. Okay. Yeah, but you can run three of them with veteran turret gunner. Again, you've got you know they're running around with twelve health. They're running around with arc pointing. <laughs> yeah, but you can you can just arc dodge them though. I, I don't think that's a valid argument. You can't they, arc dodge three three. Well, uh, then then they're only then they're only shooting you once. Uh, I, 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 true. I, I'm, I'm not gonna say that three cobalts are gonna be a thing. I just think that these did not need help, and I think they're undercosted. So we'll see, because they're already pretty good. To your point, um, the only I think they're because I think they're Eden, really good in hyperspace. I think they're okay in extended. Yeah, because Eden doesn't need uh, to to launch bombs because Eden's putting the bombs anywhere he wants anyway. That's fair. All right. Well, we can talk about my, we can talk about MG one hundred Star Fortresses all day. Let's move on to the RZ two A wing, who didn't get a change, except for the Blue Squadron Scout, the cheapest one, uh, remained at thirty two points, um, but obtained a talent, uh, which exactly mirrors what we saw for the Rebels. The Phoenix Squadron also got a talent. Uh, which is basically the I don't know, these 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 are just so much better. I didn't I was that I was actually expecting the RZA twos to go up in price, but yeah, um, they stay the same. Uh, it's a perfection thing. They're the cheapest ship in the resistance, so you kind of stuck with them. Yeah. Anyways, it uh, doesn't look like any other changes uh, as far as ships, uh, all the T-70s, all the 1300s. Wait, wait, wait a second. Thing. Wait a second, Will. There well, was I a said, change. I, to... <laughs> I said just ships now. Well, oh, I know. There's, there I is know. a T-70 change. <laughs> what? Where? You did. You get a free. You get a free jamming beam slot. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> you got me there. Uh, they all they all got free jamming beams. Yeah, we nice. we we we're kind of jumping ahead here, but there's generic jamming beam. Now we can discuss whether it's good or not in a minute. But you, you no, I'm gonna no. You, yeah, let, let me skip out on my four attack dice. That's gonna deal damage no. and roll four jams on you. No, okay, all right. So since you brought it up, I do think there's a secret tech for these jamming beams do you know there's there's only i'm going to say one ship because it's the example but there's there's only one ship who cares about having tokens at the end of the round do you know which one it is the hawk no it's the phantom oh okay. you jam up you jam up their evade they can't recloak there you go it's anti-phantom tech it's free and it's anti-phantom tech i'm taking it you know what else uh, is that phantom tech? Putting damage instead of getting rid of their token. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, okay. Well, see, it's the thing of like you only have one shot on Whisper, and she's got two evades or something. 
you more you might as well just shoot the tractor and uh try to sneak a couple tractors through or not tractors jams i don't know we'll see you can't complain about something that's free marcel you know how you it's win free. a game you know how you win a game of x-wing you kill the important ships. Yeah, I, the, per- I the person, the person, the person, the person who kills more ships wins the game. Don't complain about it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want a free slap in the face. Give, give me, no, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna jam you until final salvo. Don't worry about it. It's <laughs> not uh, <laughs> a disrespect. Uh, just gonna jam you. I'm gonna keep you alive. Watch you suffer. Uh, anyways, I do get a special call here. The only thing that uh, did change as far as upgrades is BB-8 and uh, the BB Astromech that I uh, mentioned at the beginning of the show, that they scale now. The BB Astromech, uh, it's the cost of your initiative, which is pretty simple. If you're initiative one, it costs one point. If you're somehow initiative zero, it's for free. So I'm waiting for my initiative zero resistance ship. Uh, BB-8 uh, costs two more points in addition to that. So your, your initiative value, Plus two. So it costs eight on Poe and three on an initiative one. Uh, I think that this makes a lot of sense. I wish, like, this blows me away, but I, I wish they were like so many upgrades were exactly like this because it, like, Poe gets a lot more out of BB 8 than a Blue Squadron Escort. Like, so the BB Astromech on a generic t70 like lowest cost blue squadron rookie is now only 70 or excuse me 47 points and i think uh, that bb is just a steal for one point when you can get it that lower what was that i'm saying you know so the reason why it scales right is the idea that things at high initiative the pre the, the dial adjustment is essentially what BB-8 is, right? And the BB Astromech. Mm-hmm. The dial adjustment is worth more at a higher initiative because you have more information on the board. By having this scale, which this is something that if you, if you guys hadn't noticed, and when we get to the upgrades, I think it will be a little more prevalent. One thing that FFG went across the board is anything that had pre-dial uh, reveal movement got a points increase. Because that is something that players have been abu- – repositioning has been I – I don't want to use the word abused, but it has been – it's it's one of the best tools in the toolbox. Like, wait, if I could have perfect information on the board and adjust what I did after you tried to catch me, why, why would I not – why would I not bring those tools? That's why we saw Supernatural, you know, any any – Force user, like it was like, why would you not use supernatural? Was was the was the response? Anytime somebody sent me anything that wasn't supernatural, I would say, why are you not using supernatural on Vader, Kylo, or Luke? Like it, it just was not the right call. Now with with the scaling of these, it actually, ma- I think it makes the choices a little bit more interesting overall. Like you were you were talking about, Will. Maybe you consider having BB-8 or BB Astromech now only cost a single point on one of these uh, the lowest initiative T-70s. Like that that seems good. Like being able to to get in a block at a certain point. Yeah, sure, it has limited charges, but it only costs you a point. Like I feel I I really like this decision. Is and I guess what I'm trying to get to. I think it is fantastic. Oh no, I mean, I. I'd, uh... The reposition overall, I, I totally agree that it's the it's doing two completely different things, whether you have high or low initiative. Like it's just helping you fly at low initiative, but it is uh doing something completely different. Um and I don't know, I'm I'm a big uh opponent, I guess. Pro- yeah, that's proponent, right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> of uh, the the shenanigans uh, that has been. It, it just reminded me too much of uh, the bad things about first edition. I don't think. I don't think. I just don't think it's good for the game. Just like how people didn't like Luke Gunner. I don't think I put. I'm putting Supernatural right in. Yeah, agreed. <coughs> Will are you still um, there? Do we lose you? You cut out for for a minute. No, I'm still here. Okay, cool. All right, 
But, uh, first, do you have anything else about the resistance? No, I think that's uh, that's the last of it. Just those, uh, just those astromechs there. Marcel, take the wheel. First order. All right. Uh, first order. Uh, to start off, never fly these things ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I think I, no. I, I think there's something that is in the universe out there that says if you're flying first order, you're gonna roll like crap. I don't know why. I have, <laughs> I've, I've put, I have not been able. It's got like, bad got, juju. It's got bad it's, juju. It's got bad juju. Yeah, it's got <laughs> really bad juju. I'm like, yeah, put put all these things together, get perfect positioning. Even yesterday, I played a vassal game and I had midnight scorch. Um, I had midnight scorch, quick draw and backdraft, and they're pretty well loaded, all fanatical and and uh, you know the special ops title and a couple other things. And I lost against, uh, uh, it was like a defender and something else, but basically I did two shields damage the whole time. I hate these first order. Uh, all right, but get off my, um, my love of the first order. Uh, the uh, Not a lot of change with the FOs, not none at all, actually. There's no change with the FOs except for the, um, the one that I think the, people the saw one, coming, which one. is a uh, null losing the talent skill and basically excuse me basically this is just uh getting getting squad leader off of there you know this is this is addressing the whole uh the reason that the rebel fen Rao is 52 points which is coordinate at initiative six initiative seven is really good so you're not going to be able to do that anymore yeah i'm that's actually the thing that surprised me about it originally i it it's weird that they. It. You think so? I, th I think I, mean, I think they. Just, I think it was just an oversight. I, I don't think they ever well, intended to have an initiative well, seven coordinating ship. Well, we're gonna look at squad leader later, and we're gonna see that they won't forget that mistake <laughs> ever. No. no. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So no no change with the FOs outside of uh, no losing the uh, the coordinate slot. Let's just call it that. Then with the tie SFs. Scroll, scroll, scroll. With the tie steps, there's no changes with the tie steps either. Um, I, I, you know, and, and I actually don't have any hate on them because the FOs and the SFs, um, as long as I'm not the one that's rolling the dice, they're actually pretty good ships. They're pretty good chassis. They, they, they're, they're costed relatively cheap, I think. I think you can put a good number of ships on there, especially with Fanatical being only two points um, and all of those ships having the evade action that i mean the evade action uh with the sfs you can put take an evade and then have a native uh focus after they um after they get the you know damage to hull so they're 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 well off as as they are they're they're they're, they're how they should be the tight silencers however they get a drop uh kylo ren and blackout both got a six point drop and then the rest of them, Recall, Avenger First Order, and Sanar, all got a four-point drop. The one that I think hurts the most here is probably Kylo. Kylo wasn't... I mean, I know uh, you, Dion, and a lot of other people were trying to make Kylo work um, during the Outrider. And possibly, I assume... I, I didn't see the hyperspace at Phoenix, but I assume that the hyperspace qualifiers are still... Uh, there was a lot of people running Kylo in that. Uh, and that. No, 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 Kylo. There wasn't. Okay, no, so Ky Kylo, Kylo saying... was 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 it? Uh, everybody, first order is all about those Upsilon shuttles. The first order, Upsilon. Oh yeah, the the yeah. triple Upsilons. Yeah. And but again, I think Kylo was struggling already. Now that you get rid of um, basically the the supernatural because of that adjusted point thing that you guys were just talking about. I don't think I don't I don't see how you see put Kylo on the table anytime well, soon, even in hyperspace. Well, supernatural for him, if I'm not mistaken, uh, actually doesn't cost any be. more points because he's he's, he's, he's initiative five, not right, initiative so what, six. What is, that that should make it cost twenty four points then. Yeah. So and yeah, scaling. Yeah, he it goes up for him. But then, so he, but then he got he, minus six, so it. It's still 18 points 
Well, I mean, he's still six points more than he was before, and he wasn't very good before, uh, comparatively to what other options are out there. Right. So I mean, so I I uh, I flew Kylo for our out- outrider team. And would one you pay a of- hundred for only supernatural? Him with supernatural and yeah. nothing else. Yeah. So it's it's more expensive for sure. Um, well. Yeah, the first for first order struggles, man. There's there's like nothing. I I know like already it was a struggle to try to to try to make it work. And I think the best first order list with Kylo was like Kylo with quick draw and null with the coordinate. But you can't do that anymore. So I don't know. I don't know what Kylo is going to be doing anymore. He's going to be sitting on the bench waiting for some type of new either force ability to come out or new tech that makes them makes them viable again yeah. Uh, or yeah i mean i don't th- i don't even think you can really rely on a uh, on a coordinating ship he needs to be at, at the kind of cost he's at he needs to be his own ace yeah. and he can't if he was initiative six then I, w- I would keep him at 82 and initiative six. He would be perfectly fine. But at initiative five, he's just not going to be able to cut it. Yeah, and he's just he's just taking up even more points. And you can you can maybe fly a list like you know Tavson and Kylo, but that does, it just doesn't put out enough damage um, over time. And Kylo Kylo's a ship that wants to run away. You know he he can he gets aggressive in the end game, but initially you don't. It's yeah. You don't yeah. you don't get it in people's face with Kylo. Yeah, not and it's right kind of Yeah, and it's kind of sad because uh, even even with these point point reductions, um, none of these ships really stand out. None of these silencers really have anything. Um, you know, at, at their point cost, they just don't stand out. Uh, and there's if you're gonna fly first order, you're you're essentially flying either the Upsilons, the SFs, or the FOs. Um, if, you're, if you're flying silencers, you're Probably a league night having fun. Let's see where where are we? And then yeah. the upslants. Were you gonna say something? No, I was. That's that's it. There's no other changes. Everything is the same. Yeah. yeah. So I, like, is it is it too strong to say that out of our five factions, that first order maybe minus the triple upsilon list, which is really strong, is the ha, has the least amount of options that are competitive. The quote unquote worst faction. I would say without a doubt, yes. Oh yeah. Fully agree. Yeah. So Yeah, they are. And 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 even I mean they do have some options. Like I like I told you, the what I flew yesterday with uh backdraft, quick draw, uh midnight and scorch, it's not a bad list. And it had it had it been more average dice, I probably would have pulled it out. But um all in all, it doesn't have the tools to deal with a wide variety. You, you're going to be relying on on, on good matchups, and um, there's going to be matchups that just eat you up. And even the the triple hoops line, I know that triple hoops lines have been doing really well, but people are going to figure it out. Um, and things that are very maneuverable, like even the five A wings that you you played it against me, Dion, that one time. Yeah. You had the uh, you you flew the three hoops lines, I flew the five A wings. Two A wings basically took out the three whole, the whole li- oh my god yeah all you, once you get behind them apart. yeah so took it apart all right so our next uh, our next thing we're gonna talk about are the generic upgrades um, which we did see a decent amount of movement there uh, across the board let's go ahead and head back to our document here so um, Astromex we'll start there. Astromech, we saw some change here to the R5 and the R2 Astromech. R2 Astromech uh, down to four points. Uh, I the R2 the ability to make your dial a little bit better is really good, and I think that's something where people are going to be able to pull some more value out of that, especially with some of the generic T65 X wings. I think that is re- really uh, really helps them there be able to uh, be a little bit more maneuverable after the K turns. Uh, Cannon. That, you, you had, you're having a first. Oh, it was on the air horn. That was the first edition moment. I did. Yeah, R2 is the uh, heal the shield. Oh, heal the shield. Sorry. Ugh, dang it. Wah, FFG. Wah, wah, wah. FFG. That's the, that's the first edition. They're, uh, that's what they were in first edition. Oh, man. 
No, let's get his shield back, and uh, R5's the heal a hall for an action. Yeah, okay, so never mind. Scratch, scratch that. Sure, regen's cheaper, guys. That's what it is, As like, just like R2-D2 was, which we mentioned earlier. Or did we? I don't even remember. We should have. R2-D2 is just a couple points cheaper. Uh, cannons. Jamming Bean, minus two points, zero points. I don't like free upgrades. I know that it's not good. Or not great. What? I understand. It. What? what? <laughs> Would you field a one point jamming beam? Ever? No, no, I wouldn't. But I so, still so it has to cost zero <laughs> points. Uh, it okay. has to cost zero points for you to still not carry it because that's just it. It does have a cost. Uh, well, somebody in the chat made a smart, a smart uh, cost to it, which the smart cost is it costs you damage and actual dice. But I'm going to give it a different cost. It gives you a cost of having to take those cards out of your box and pack it <laughs> and make sure you don't lose one because no. you never use it and then get disqualified because you don't have all your cards when you're at no, the final uh, table. No, then, it, if if you're bringing a jamming beam, you should only shoot it at phantoms who are, want to cloak at the end of the round. And there was phantom, or, I, or I kill I will a phantom. Say, don't jam them. Kill them. I, what about uh, what about a reinforced large base ship? Jamming beam uh, would work. Take that reinforce off. That's technically doing damage, right? You can net yeah. more damage by doing that. Maybe. I don't know because you know. <laughs> let's say you're rolling three dice. Was, okay, and, you know, I, you're I rolling mean, three dice, and the the. The, the jam is usually on, I'm not the jam, the reinforcer are usually on zero or one agility ship. So, you know what, put the, take that extra shield off. Just saying, it it, it could find uses. Well, I think we'll we'll definitely see it. So get used I, to it. it it's, it's a slot where you bring it, and if there's that one case, you're like, I need to get that token off. Just that, that one, you might use it once in a tournament, but if it works, it works, right? I don't know. I don't like free real, upgrades. We'll continue. I'm just gonna, okay, I'm gonna, real, wait, real I'm, quick answer to uh, somebody in chat, just because we talked about Null, and the, Null is placed at zero, so that's that. So he's placed at zero, and then he flies at initiative seven. So we're at generic crew. Um, the only person who got any change was perceptive co-pilot, minus two points, um, so sitting at eight. I'm not sure this was entirely necessary because I still saw quite a few people using Perceptive Copilot in lists um, and getting on more... what though. I mean, it was. I mean, I guess nobody be, like winning. I've only anything. ever seen it on. Uh, I've only ever seen it in combination with Han Gunner. So, uh, uh, or uh, you know what? Uh, two tubes uses two tubes. it. Yep, I've seen it on Resistance Falcons as well. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. What, the perceptive co-pilot? Yep. No, you can fit them in now. Uh, it makes it a little bit better now that um, the Shadowcaster base, for the most part, got reduced, and you've got Sabine, who takes those focus tokens and converts them to uh, evades. Gets a... So it, it fits on Sabine, actually. And actually, uh, Sabine with uh, perceptive co-pilot is uh, more defensive than Asajj with um lats crew and it's it's cheaper all right we'll keep going here uh devices no change there force powers this is where we're going to talk a little bit about supernatural reflexes also a flex uh what, what's the word um variable variable point cost card and it, it is important to note that the variables start at zero not at one and go to zero to six so um with a change to supernatural reflexes, I think part of it is because of the upcoming uh, Jedi that are going to be happening in the Grand Republic. There are low initiative Jedi in there, and this is a pretty thematic card. I do like the idea of, of them being able to, to do something a little bit different here with their force and, and get, get those boosts and barrel rolls. Uh, but at the original cost, it was you would never field it with a with a quote unquote cheap uh, generic Jedi maybe now in an initiative one Jedi pilot or gen uh, initiative two for four points uh, makes makes you think about it and then the increase though the upside 32 points if you want that on Vader whoa that 
I get it. And I'm glad that it's expensive because if you if you want to have perfect information at initiative six, it's it needs to cost you. You can't have like I don't think in the game it's it's okay for people to have a huge bid plus an initiative six pilot plus be able to move wherever you feel like it. Like it it takes it takes the movement out of the game. I think it's a great uh, call by FFG. Make the dial matter matter more. Uh, I've I've said that for a long time. The dial is the most important part of X-Wing, and by making that more expensive, uh, that's what you're doing. Gunner. Uh, Agile Gunner goes down by two. Veteran Turret Gunner goes down by two. We talked about it in a couple of uh, applications for Veteran Turret Gunner. Uh, Agile tur Turret Gunner is the one that lets you move your mobile arc at the end of the turn, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... I haven't. I've never seen anybody use it. Have you? Have you guys? I don't think it's um, even at eight points. I think I would. I would probably use it. I fly a lot of uh, YT thirteen hundreds uh, scum side. Yep. Uh, I would use it on that, or even on a um, on a non Dengar uh, jump master if it were at four points. Do the lancers have a gunner slot? No, the Lancers oh, and and uh, Jump Masters don't have gunner slots. So basically, you're just the ships that would have wanted this. it that can't even take it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, pretty much. But on a YT thirteen hundred, I would probably put it at three or four, maybe three points, uh, because at the end of the turn, you basically know where you're going to be moving, uh, and they don't have multiple actions, so you want to be able to turn that arc. Uh, yes, you're. You're telling the other opponent what, what, basically which direction you're going, but um, yeah, but eight points. Just give give me any of the other gunners instead for eight points. All right, then we get to elicits. No change in elicits. Missiles. Here we did see some movement. The barrage rocket goes up by one point, making it uh, <laughs> on top of the the excuse me the Imperial Bomber going up in points. No more uh, five copies of Barrage Rockets in your list anymore. <laughs> which is funny, which was the reason why I got so many charge tokens in my streaming set. Was <laughs> just in case we had like five bombers with Barrage versus five bombers with Barrage. So not necessary anymore. Got some extras of those now. Uh, homing Missile goes up by two. Why do you guys think that's the case? Um... A wings, RZ two, um, free damage. Yeah, I mean I, the free damage component. I just haven't seen too many people running it. Is I guess was the thing. Was yeah, like, oh, actually, okay. you know which one it also fits on really well, uh, which sucks because it's probably the the ones that could use it. The, the, you know, the faction that can use it the most. It actually fits really well with um, with the tie SFs because the tie SFs can basically shoot past you. Take a target lock, get a free spin back of the arc, and now they're they basically can can deal auto damage by saying I'm going to shoot you with four dice or take a damage. You're always going to take damage. And you know, you so, know, I did, so it I, hurts the SFs the most, I think. I did just have a thought. I did just have a thought. Them being more expensive also makes a little more sense because I'm I'm before my comments on this missile, I was assuming the current or pass now uh, ability to move wherever you felt like with your supernaturals and all these other things all the pre-movement shenanigans being cheaper now that we're going to see less of that maybe homing missile becomes even a better weapon because aces quote-unquote ace ships are going to have a harder time getting out of people's arcs and homing missile versus those type of ships uh, can be pretty devastating because one damage on your you know, on your Poe, you know, it can can uh, can be a bad bad day. Mm -hmm. All right, modifications. Ablative plating goes up in cost. Um, we haven't seen too much of it, but I think maybe with some of the increasing of bombs that we might get with a skur getting cheaper, um, ablative plating can be pretty pretty annoying. <laughs> To, to say the least, you know, somebody tosses a bomb in and the, your seismic charges and they're just 
infinitely uh, immune. I mean, not infinitely. It's it's twice, but two times is enough to uh, to make it pretty frustrating. Making it more expensive, I think, is important. So I'm okay with that. Afterburner is going down in points, giving aces a little bit of a chance. Engine upgrade goes down. This is another one of those variable point upgrades. Uh, instead of being 369 relative to the size of your base, it is now 2, 4, and 7. So, uh, I mean, they're, they're encouraging large bases. They want a boosting Falcon. They say, bring it back. <laughs> Munitions failsafe goes, uh, goes to one point. A card that we don't ever see, or very rarely see at least. Static discharge veins goes up to eight. Is there Why? some? I uh, yeah, that's we haven't seen too much of it. Will, can you think of any, any reason why that would have gone up? Uh, let's read. Let's read the card first for a second. I know it has to do with it's, you. At the end of the turn, you take a damage to get rid of um, a red token. Uh, no, you don't take a. You take a stress. A stress. So, static discharge veins. Before you would gain one ion or jam token, if you're not stressed, you may choose another ship at range 0 to 1 and gain one stress token. If you do, the chosen ship gains that ion or stress token instead. So, okay. I mean, not the card I thought. It, I don't know. I, I've only ever seen it with like four LOM crew in Scum. Uh, four alarm takes you take an ion to uh, cancel like it prevents tone from using their token i just i, I honestly i i think i'm i'm gonna just echo your sentiment of i have no idea why this card exists and why it now costs eight points because <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's something coming out that we don't know i think that's the only thing i, I must there must be there must be something coming down the pipeline that, that like ion or lets you uh yeah let yourself jam or something. Yeah, I don't know. Is there was there like a freelance slicer combination that no one was using? Was that called freelance slicer? Yeah, lets no, you like no. spend your lock to jam, and then you might jam yourself. Was that like a combination that we didn't? I missed. Mm -mm. I mean, nobody used it because you had to still yeah. like roll a die. It still wasn't guarantee or anything like that. Yeah, I think the only uh, ironing self ironing. Is the uh, the black one title? I can't think of anything else that I answer yourself. Well, the black one title and the um, four lam. Oh, uh, you do. That's actually that's four lam. That's not yeah. a bad uh, four lam and discharge. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you Ooh, actually yeah, you, you four lam and then you you pass off one of the two ion tokens that you get off to a ship close to you. Yeah, it's actually not not horrible. That's actually really. Uh, good. I actually never, yeah, that, uh, good call with the black one title. That's super funny because you could uh, slam with the black one title into somebody because you it's can. a maneuver. Yeah. And then just give them, hey, I'm like, oh, hey, I slammed. So why don't you take an eye on and I'll just take a stress. Yep. And I guess there's the shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, the shenanigans I'll, with the, what you call it? Um I don't know. Whatever. Feedback right, array. Feedback array. Yeah, it's maybe. I don't yeah. know. It, I don't know. It's a weird card. I don't know why they printed it. Yeah, I like. I like. I like, I like now Lam, though. Now that I think about it, they made Forlam cheaper, two points cheaper. So with Forlam being cheaper and this being more expensive, next week. There you go. Same cost. Change. Yeah, same cost. All right. So sensor slot, advanced sensors goes up two points. Which I don't know if you guys noticed in the article, they actually said that advanced sensors was a variable point cost upgrade, but. It's not. Maybe it was meant to be at first, and I do agree that it should be, um, because it again gives pilots access to pre-movement before they reveal their dial. So I think it should be um, scaled, and I would not. I would not be surprised if in the uh, our, our six months from now, when it gets changed again, that advanced sensors gets uh, gets that that treatment, if not sooner. What what would you pay for on the low? It, so tens at like what initiative would you say on on the scale? Uh, ten is maybe like four. Yeah, yeah, four, four, three, maybe even. I mean, look really? at supernatural. 
I mean, it's okay. playing that same role of supernatural. It's. I mean, it's. Be- I, it's. I can't say quite that it's better, but you're usually only taking it on ships that have repositions anyway. So it's just as good as supernatural, and even more flexible because you're able to like, oh, I'm gonna focus and then just bump into you. Yeah. I'm gonna target lock and then just bump into you. Yeah, you're you're doing this at the very end. So this should like an an initiative six ship. Um, well, let's put it quick draw. And quick draw, this should be maybe a twenty pointer. Yeah. So advanced sensors. We'll see. We'll see the uh, the movement on that in the future. Collision detector goes up by one point. Fair. It's a good card. Um, I mean, I, I one point. We'll we'll see how much it gets used. Uh, biggest one here into the sensor slot. Ten points now for trajectory simulator. I mean, it is it is such a good card. Um, I was very surprised when it uh, was released and only set at three points. Uh, I was like, okay, that seems fine. Uh, which is too too light handed at first. Ten point increase. I I'm I'm all for it. Being able to throw bombs is a really good uh, really good tool. And you saw people doing it to like clear uh, rocks before people engaged. I mean, I did it myself using a uh, a star fortress. So it's a great tool. And also, I think well with the increase in that, it also makes swarms just a little bit better. And maybe a little bit more viable because one thing I did hear a lot of people say is like, why would I fly a swarm when there's trajectory simulator out there? Well, now it's ten points, so you can't have too many of them. Composure goes down a point because they close all the loopholes. <laughs> what do you and mean by all the loopholes? It's a bad card. Um, so if you fail a linked action and you have composure, you can't get the focus because now you get the stress when you fail a red linked action. Oh, so you get. Wait, so if you, okay, let's put this on Lulo. So if Lulo takes a target lock, attempts to boost, fails the boost, he does not get the focus. Correct. Boom. Yeah, because he got stressed first, and then composure tr- uh, triggers. And it is a focus action on composure. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. All right. Looking at the other talents, Debris Gambit goes up in cost by one to three points. I mean, Token stacking is good, I, I guess. I mean, uh, it's kind of an arbitrary number. They're just kind of making adjustments, maybe with some of the things that are coming with um, with the Jedi. They're just trying to reduce the defensiveness by making it a little more expensive. Juke goes up in price to lock out some more quad phantom shenanigans. Lone Wolf also goes up in price. Lone Wolf is a card we hadn't seen too much play from up until recently um but i, I like this is kind of like a proactive change because i think i do think we were going to start seeing more lone wolf and uh seeing the price there is good squad leader same thing we've talked about variable point upgrade this one changes starting at initiative zero points are now two four six eight ten twelve fourteen uh the higher initiative that you coordinate things the better it is so um from four points, that's a pretty big change going from four to 14, for instance, on a PS6. So I'm all, I'm all in. <laughs> all in there. Trick shot goes up a point. I agree. I mean, it was a, pretty much a staple with one, uh, one point. Why not? I was expecting it to go up more. Yes. I, I, agreed. I think they're maybe being a little bit uh, uh, cautious at first, kind of see. And if it continues to see the amount of play still, amount of auto include i think it'll go up again i i think it's still the best talent to that's two and under mm-hmm. yeah so i i could it, it could go up to three and i think people would still people would definitely still use it on large base turrets uh yeah. if not uh high pilot skill ships still and with all the all the large bases going up and uh, excuse me down in price the the trick shot ends up being cheap like the overall cost if you would have compared it from before to now is actually still less so yeah trick shot still good on the large basis <clears throat> targeting synchronizer goes up in price um this preventing shenanigans there with tech and being able to shoot not pre- not preventing but trying to limit that maybe a little bit we haven't seen anybody using it yet but it doesn't mean anybody could have uh, proton torpedoes up three points up to 12 was not surprised here 
Um, is it was that aggressive enough? Proton torpedoes, twelve points. What do you guys think? I think so. I think they're um, they're by far the most expensive ordnance out there as far as torpedoes, missiles, or anything else. They're they're, they're really good. Twelve points. I think the ships that that really carried them the most. Well, let me let, let's re, let's restate that. Uh, Redline got got bumped. It still it still can be good on Poe, but Poe itself is already an expensive ship. So, so yeah, I, th- I think I think it's fine with twelve. Even if they kept it at at like ten, I think it still would have been fine as long as they they made a couple of the other changes. Uh, some of the other ships that I think will highly will want to take this a lot uh you you always had uh wedge but outside of wedge you're i think the e-wings having being able to take that target lock from uh basically turn one and if with r3 an e-wing with r3 in this um gives it that well gives it basically saying if you're in my arc you're gonna roll four i'm gonna roll four dice against you one two or three pretty good um, but I, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. All right. Yeah. I think that they put it at th- a three point increase is just enough to lock off spamming it. Uh, there was a Jenden quadruple bombers list. Yeah. Uh, that, so that good. was putting four proton torpedoes in there and there's, uh, I mean that's kind of the extreme because but there's there's a lot of like triple proton torpedo lists out there, and I think this is like you can still bring one and it's fine, but like that that three point extra three points you're paying uh, really begins to multiply quickly. But I mean I I still think at twelve points it's the best munition in the game. So yeah, it's still it's still very good. <laughs> Four dice attacks are good, especially when you don't have four attack dice normally. You just have that punching power at the beginning of a, of a match. And last but not least, we have the turret slot. Both the dorsal and the ion turret go down in cost. Um, maybe we'll start. We already saw dorsal turret used by people who had the turret slot, specifically Drea, right? That's what we saw it on a lot. Um, Capital and, two. And yeah, Capital. They're, they're pretty well. much the only turret carriers these days. That, that were used so maybe we'll start seeing some ion shenanigans i know there are people who claim they love their ion turret um but i mean it's it's harder to use now in second edition a uh, little bit cheaper sitting at four points instead of six and dorsal turret at two points instead of four so lots of i think, I think those are steals now uh they were like real upgrades before now two points for another arc uh, I think that's that's so good now. Like you have to bring that if you have that slot. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I agreed. Agreed. Marcel, what do you think? I don't know. That was a question I was reading the uh, Aces. <laughs> my my opponent. I'm flying against Tyler this week. He's flying a Tie Swarm, and I'm going to be flying a a Wing Swarm. Um, so what was the question? Is Ion Cannon good anymore at four points? Yes. Yeah. Way better than uh, Dorsal Turret, I think. I, I, you know, not, not a lot of people eye on anymore. And I, and I think now that FFG is making a a a point, they're 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 making it kind of almost a mission to put big bases on on the table with low agility. Uh, Ioning big bases is just and and big bases with turrets with rotatable turrets, and now an ion says basically you're only taking a focus. Um, I, I think they're 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 worth looking at now. If you eye on a YT thirteen hundred or dash or anything else, and they're they're gonna be you know where their turret's gonna be, and they're only getting a focus. Really good. Agreed. And All I'm right. gonna be Tyler with his Tice Swarm. I don't care. <laughs> hey, wings are better than Tice. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and and wrap this up. There's a couple of quick statistics that I want to give, uh, and then we'll, we'll end our conversation. We've gone through, through everything here. When it comes to combined pilots, the pilot that percentage-wise had the biggest reduction was Teltravera, 16.67% cheaper 
overall, followed closely by Manaru, 16.07. Okay. Then the biggest increase, the pilot that just got the biggest hammer, uh, percentage-wise, of course, we're looking just at percentages, is Captain Jonas with a 19.44% increase going up seven points. Again, we're looking at percentage, and that's usually, you know, when you're building lists, um, a lot of us, uh, most of us when we're thinking about it, you think about how much space, how many, how much, what percent of my points does this ship take up? And when when you increase it by by that much of a margin, uh, it's it's going to make a difference in your bis your list building for sure. Did the same thing for um for what you call it for upgrades. Now upgrades are a little little more deceiving because they're such small number changes. Um, but I think probably. The one that really sticks out here, of course, jamming bean, one hundred percent cheaper, of course, one hundred percent free. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Leia Organa, seventy-five percent. You know that minus six going down to two from eight uh, is pretty huge, as well as Lando, uh, sixty percent change here, uh, going down to two points. And there, there's some other some other upgrades in here that, that really also. A little significant because you're taking two of them, and yeah. because when you're playing with IGs, you're 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 playing a numbers game. Yeah, uh, you're trying to fit. At this point, it's not about how much you can load on them. It's what is the best way to fit a third ship on there. Yep, and uh, yeah, so good stuff there. And then when it comes to uh, price increase. I mean, numbers are kind of weird here because of uh, of how things go. But I mean, supernatural reflexes is, is is a huge thing, and there's no percentage there because I didn't have time to uh, to piece them out individually. But I mean, that is a uh, hundred and fifty percent, right? Hundred and fifty percent increase overall. Oh. Trajectory simulator also got a huge one. Two hundred and thirty three percent more expensive. <laughs> Going from uh, from three to ten. So I mean, just I, I like looking at the percentages, uh, just because again it's taking up a different different amount of pie, you know, from uh, different bigger bigger slices of your of your ship. Last thing we're gonna touch on here, uh, right here. So overall, uh, one of our one of our good friends, Claude. Claude Voss, I think is his last name. He he did the combination uh, costs of every faction. Um, like, what what was the variation overall? Uh, one thing about these numbers, really quickly, is they do include the variable points cost each at each initiative, basically counting as its own um, as its own upgrade, as individual upgrade. Which I think is actually a pretty good way to look at it because they're. They fill different slots, different amount of points, excuse me, um, per initiative. So anyway, um, overall, looking at the uh, total variations, the Rebel Alliance had the biggest change, 134-point reduction overall for the, uh, for the Rebels. Absolutely massive, with the smallest coming to the First Order with only a 28-point change. The uh, and and that's an extended in hyperspace. Uh, again, the Rebel Alliance minus 69 points overall, um, followed very closely by the resistance minus 62 because of the uh, that there's some BB 8 shenanigans in there, which makes that number pretty high, but still, Rebels again getting the biggest boost. Um, and there's some more. I'm going to, again, post all of these in there. You guys can start piecing through it yourself and having some fun with it. But I think overall, the biggest the, the biggest winner of the point changes, I think, are the Rebels. Um, biggest loser is, is First Order, right? Well, they lost on... I mean, they were already, they were already behind, but they're yeah, even they more behind. Yeah, they lost on release date. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's... That's pretty much it. There's, I'm, I'm excited to see what this is going to change for our game overall. But I think it, it's a positive change overall. You take it all, and I think we're gonna have a better game of X-wing uh, at the end of the day.
Closing thoughts, gentlemen. Uh, I would say overall positive. Uh, I don't think... Uh, I mean, the First Order may not... Uh, it still doesn't look the best, sure. But the points didn't, like, single them out and, like, jack up their prices. That's that's what I thought was going to be what might happen, is that a faction would overall gain points. But it doesn't seem to be that way. That the the things that needed to be more expensive are getting more expensive, and uh, the things, the, the many, many things that aren't seen play and weren't at the those ships' caliber are being reduced down. So I think it's overall good for each individual faction. Agreed. Marcel, closing thoughts? You know, I, I think we're in the um, early stages of the Wild Wild West again. I think you're going to see a lot of big base sh ships tested on the board, mm -hmm. which is good, which is going to bring a lot of big rocks and big debris, which opens up a lot of other things that are now playing off of rocks and debris. And then we have, you know, in possibly two months, we're going to have the drop of two new factions, which will add another level of complexity to all of the list building. So, um, yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, really just uh, the, the winner is uh, uh, ships with big trunks, you know, with, tr with a lot of junk in the J trunk. Junk in the trunk. <laughs> Well, I want to thank everybody who joined us live and who's listening at home. You guys are fantastic. And one, uh, the the first in the first big event that has these new points is the Toronto System Open. If I'm not mistaken, is that correct? Toronto is at the end of February. Yeah. Which uh, which I think Marcel and I are planning to go to to play. Um, VTTV will be covering it. They do a great, fantastic job, so make sure to tune in uh, when they do that. But I actually get an event to play, and I'm excited to uh, try to find uh, something fun and uh, competitive to play in these new points. You can always watch our Twitch coverage. Uh, we've been streaming all the time now. I mean, we literally have streamed uh, every day since Saturday. We had Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We're going to be on tomorrow. Wednesday for uh, not our league night again because of the uh, the polar vortex outside. <clears throat> Thursday, Gold Squadron Paincast, and uh, don't worry. Uh, some people ask Dion, is the goal to have seven days a week uh, some type of Gold Squadron podcast content? Like, hmm. Yes, that is the goal. So <laughs> we'll see how things work out. Uh, watch our X-Wing videos and replays on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe there. It's free, guys. And uh, we're trying to get to 6,000. Help us get to 6,000. We're super close. Uh, look up Gold Squadron Podcast. Hit that bell button as well so that you can uh, get notifications when we post and go live. Don't forget to join our Discord community. Link in the description down below. We're talking about lists. We're talking about the paint cast. We're talking about future content. We're, we're just having a good time and uh, just building our community uh, here. Uh, fun, X-Wing, family-friendly, and just having a good time being good people. And lastly and most importantly, if you enjoy the content we bring you and want to help us continue expanding that content, go to patreon.com slash gold squadron. And thank you to everybody who have taken the time to support us. A uh, couple of changes are coming to Patreon. So patrons, make sure you take a look there. I'm going to start posting some things because we're switching from episodic to monthly in March. And I'm going to be making a post to explain how that is all going to work uh, when we get there. Love every single one of you who are watching and listening. Thank you so much. Stay warm. Stay safe for Marcel and Will. My name's Dio Morales. Gold Squadron, out.